Chapter 36 Madhurya Ras Stai Bhav and Stages of Rati The next day, Vijay Kumar arrived punctually at the lotus feet of his Gurudev, offered Sastang Dandavat, and sat in his place. Sri Gopal Guru Goswami observed Vijay's eagerness to know about Stai Bhav and said, Madhurya Rati is the Stai Bhav of Madhurya Ras. Vijay, what causes the appearance of Rati? Goswami, Rati arises from Abhiyog, Vishaya, Sambanda, Abhiman, Tadya Vishesh, Upama and Swabhav. Each of these causes is progressively superior to the previous one, so the Rati that arises from Swabhav is the best of all. Vijay, what is Abhiyog? Goswami, Abhiyog is expressing one's bhav. There are two types of Abhiyog, that which one reveals personally and that which someone else reveals. Vijay, what is Vishaya? Goswami, there are five types of Vishaya, namely sound, shabda, touch, sparsha, beauty, rupa, taste, rasa, and fragrance, ganda. Vijay, what is Sambanda? Goswami, Sambanda refers to the glories of four aspects, lineage, beauty, qualities, and pastimes. Vijay, what is Abhiman? Goswami, Abhiman is the definite decision to accept only one particular object, although many other beautiful objects are present. For example, when Krishna went to Mathura, a certain Brajagopi had awakened her Rati for Krishna. However, she had not been able to have his association because she had not yet attained full youth. One of her friends saw the exquisite beauty of her age and spoke to her in a solitary place to test her. O oh, Saki, Krishna has left Braj and gone away, and now your new youthfulness and other qualities are developing. There are so many youths in Braj who are handsome and qualified. If you want to marry any of them, whisper to me, and I will speak with your mother and make all the necessary arrangements. When that Brajagopi heard her friend's words, she replied, O oh, Saki, this whole world may have so many expert young men who are like waves of beauty and sweetness, each sweeter and more beautiful than the one before. Let them be. Highly qualified young ladies may accept them. As far as I am concerned, if someone does not wear a crown of peacock feathers upon his head, if there is no morali splendidly adorning his lips, and if his body is not beautified by tilak and other decorations made with minerals such as garika datu, then I will consider him to be as insignificant as a piece of straw, and I will not have the slightest inclination towards him. This is an example of Abhiman. Vijay I have understood Abhiman. What is Tadiya Vishesh? Goswami Krishna's footprints, the pasturing grounds of Vrindavan, and Krishna's Priyajan are called Tadiya Vishesh. Krishna's Priyajan and those who have Rag, Anurag, and Mahabhav for him. Vijay, what is Upama? Goswami, Upama is a resemblance between one object and another. In this context, it refers to some resemblance to Krishna. Vijay, what is Swabhav? Goswami, Swabhav is the nature that is self-manifest and does not depend on any other cause. There are two kinds of Swabhav, Nishag and Swarup. Vijay, what is Nishag? Goswami, Nishag is the desire or sanskar arising from firmly established habits or practice. Hearing about Krishna's guna, rupa and so on is only a partial cause of the awakening of Rati. Nishag consists of the impressions caused by steadfast Ratyabhas, 
developed in many lives of the jiva. It is awakened suddenly and unexpectedly when one hears the descriptions of Krishna's guna, rupa and so on. This means that hearing about Krishna's qualities and beauty is not the only cause of rati. Vijay, please explain Swarup. Goswami, Swarup is the bhav that has no birth and no origin, and which manifests its own perfection independently. There are three types of Swarup, Krishna Nishta, Lalana Nishta, and Ubhaya Nishta. Those who have a demonic nature cannot attain Krishna Nishta Swarup, but it is easily attainable for those who have a godly nature. Lalana Nishta Swarup is self-manifest Rati that is expressed as an involuntary impulse towards Sri Krishna, even when one has not seen him or heard about his beauty and qualities. The Svabhav in which both Krishna Nishta and Lalana Nishta are manifest is called Ubhaya Nishta Swarup. Vijay. That means that there are seven causes altogether, Abhiyog, Vishaya, Sambanda, Abhiman, Tadya Vishesh, Upama, and Swabhav. Do all types of Madhurya Rati arise from these seven causes? Goswami. The Krishna Rati of the gopis of Gokul occurs naturally and of its own accord. It is self-manifest and is not aroused by Abhiyog and so on. However, these causes also play a role in many pastimes. The rati of the sadhana siddhas and nishak siddhas is awakened by these seven causes, beginning with abhiyog. Vijay, I have not been able to comprehend this subject thoroughly. Please give one or two examples to help me to understand. Goswami, the rati that I am talking about arises only from raga nuga bhakti. But this type of rati is very far away as long as Vaidhi Bhakti does not become Bhava Mayi. A sadhak who develops a greed for those moods on seeing the Brajagopi's ecstatic emotional performance of Krishna Seva gradually attains rati arising from the six causes other than Svabhav and especially from Priya Jan. When he becomes sadhana siddha he experiences a spurti, a momentary internal manifestation of Lalana Nishta Swarup. Vijay. How many kinds of Rati are there? Goswami. There are three kinds of Rati Sadharani, general, Samanjasaha, proper, and Samarta, competent. The Rati of Kubja is an example of Sadharani Rati. It has been condemned because its fundamental basis is the desire to enjoy union. The rati of the Mahishis of Dwarka is called Samanjasa, proper, because it satisfies worldly standards of righteous conduct, and it is awakened by the regulative principles of marriage. I am his wife, he is my husband. This rati is limited by such sentiments. The rati of the residents of Gokul is Samarta, because such rati magnificently goes beyond even the boundaries of social restrictions and religious principles. Samarta rati is not actually improper. Indeed, from the perspective of the ultimate transcendental objective, Parama Paramarta, only Samarta rati is correct in the highest sense. Sadharani rati is like a jewel. Samanjasa rati is like Chintamani, and Samartarati is supremely rare, like the Kustuba Mani. Vijay's eyes filled with tears, and weeping continuously, he said, Today I am extremely fortunate to hear such an unprecedented and exalted subject. Prabhu, by your causeless mercy, please describe the characteristics of Sadharani Rati. Goswami Sadharani Rati appears from the desire for Sambhog. It is stimulated by utter infatuation when one sees Krishna face to face. But
but it is not so deep, and neither is it thick nor permanent. When the desire for some bog subsides, this rati also subsides, which is why it is categorized as inferior. Vijay. What is the nature of Samanjasarati? Goswami. Samanjasarati is the full and concentrated rati that is aroused by hearing of Krishna's beauty and qualities, and which arises from the conception, I am his wife, and he is my husband. Sometimes the desire for sambhog also occurs in this rati. When the desire for sambhog is separate from samanjasarati, it is not possible to control Sri Krishna by expressing one's mood, or by hava, bhava, hela, and so on, arising from the desire for sambhog. Vijay, what is the nature of samarta rati? Goswami, the desire for sambhog with Krishna is present in every type of rati. In sadharani and samanjasarati, the desire for sambhog is for one's own personal satisfaction. Samarta is the special bhav that is completely selfless and free from the self-interested desire for union and which attains the state of tadatmya or oneness with the desire for union. Vijay, what is the nature of that special bhav? Kindly clarify this point a little more. Goswami, there are two types of desire for sambhog. The first is the desire for sambhog in which one desires that one's own senses are satisfied by the beloved for one's own happiness. The second is the desire for sambhog that consists entirely of the conception that one should satisfy the senses of the beloved for his happiness. The first type of desire can be called calm because the desire for one's own happiness is inherent in it. The second type of desire has been called prem, because it consists exclusively of the desire for the happiness of one's beloved. The first type of desire, calm, is powerful, and it is prominent in Sadharani Rati, but it does not predominate in Samanjasa. The latter characteristic, namely prem, or the exclusive desire for the happiness of one's beloved, is the inherent distinctive function, vishesh dharm, of the desire for sambhog in samarta rati. Vijay, one must feel happiness from the touch of one's beloved in sambhog. Is there no desire for this happiness in samarta rati? Goswami, it is certainly extremely difficult to be completely free from such a desire. Nevertheless, although such a desire is present in the heart of one who has Samarta Rati, it is extremely faint. This Samarta Rati becomes powerful with its support of its Vishesh Dharm, specific characteristic, when it embraces and becomes one with the desire for Sambhog. This type of Rati is celebrated by the name Samarta, capable, because it is endowed with great capability to control Krishna. Vijay, what is the special glory of Samarta Rati? Goswami, as soon as this Samarta Rati appears, it becomes oblivious to all types of obstacles, such as family, religious principles, patience and shyness. This is so whether it was aroused by Sambandha, Tadiya, Swabhavika Swarup, or any other causes beginning with Abhiyog that I mentioned previously. This type of Rati is extremely deep. Vijay How does the desire for Sambhog attain oneness when it mixes with Shuddha Rati? Goswami The Samarta Rati of the Brajagopis is only for the sake of Krishna's happiness, and whatever happiness they experience in their sambhog is also to please Krishna. Therefore, the desire for sambhog combines with rati, which is exclusively the desire for Krishna's happiness, and assumes the most astounding splendor with waves of vilas. This rati does not allow the desire for sambhog 
to exist separately from itself. Sometimes this rati can terminate itself in samanjasa. Vijay. Aho, how extraordinary this rati is. I want to hear about its ultimate glory. Goswami. When this rati is mature, it attains the condition of Mahabhav. All liberated personalities are searching for this rati, and five kinds of bhaktas attain it to the degree that they are capable of doing so. Vijay. Prabhu, I wish to know about the sequence in which rati evolves. Goswami. Syadri dreyam rati prema prodyan sneha kramad ayam syanmana pranayo rago nurago baba ityapi Ujvala nilamani staibhav prakarana 53 The meaning is that this madhurya rati is made unshakable by the presence of antagonistic elements. Then it is called Prem. This Prem gradually manifests its own sweetness as it develops into Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag, and Bhav. Vijay. Prabhu, please give an example to help me understand this point. Goswami. Just as the seed of sugarcane grows and progressively develops, into cane juice, gore, kanda, sakara, sita, and sitotpala. Similarly, rati, prem, sneha, man, pranaya, rag, anurag, and bhav are all one substance in progressive stages of development. In this context, the word bhav refers to mahabhav. Vijay. Why have you referred to all these bhavs as prem? when they all have different names. Goswami Pandits have used the word Prem to denote all the stages beginning with Sneha because they are six progressive stages in the development of the unmitigated pleasure sports, Vilas, of Prem itself. As Prem for Krishna appears in his Bhaktas, the corresponding type of Prem also arises in Krishna for his Bhaktas. Vijay. What is the primary characteristic of Prem? Goswami. In Madhurya Ras, the bond of emotion between the youthful couple never breaks, despite there being cause for the destruction of the relationship. That indestructible emotional bond is called Prem. Vijay. How many kinds of Prem are there? Goswami. There are three kinds, Proda, Madhya, and Manda. Vijay, what is the nature of Proda Prem? Goswami, in Proda Prem, the heart of the beloved flounders in anxiety over the pain that her lover must be feeling when she is late for the meeting. Vijay, what is Madhya Prem? Goswami, Madhya Prem is that in which the beloved can tolerate the distress of the lover. Vijay. What is Manda Prem? Goswami. Manda Prem is Prem in which forgetfulness may occur under some particular circumstances of time and place, or in which there is no sacrifice or respect, as the lovers are always extremely familiar with each other, due to being very intimate and remaining together. Although this prem is mild, manda, there is no disrespect or neglect in it. Vijay If there are any more important points on this subject, please be so kind as to explain them. Goswami Proda, madhya and manda prem can also be easily understood by one other type of characteristic. The prem in which separation is intolerable is proda prem. The prem in which the pain inflicted by separation is tolerable is madhya prem. And the prem in which forgetfulness may occur in certain special circumstances is called manda prem. Vijay. 
I have understood Prem. Now please describe Sneha. Goswami. When Prem attains its ultimate limit and illuminates the lamp of the chitta, mind, and melts the heart, it is called Sneha. Here the word chitta denotes the attainment of the object, Vishaya, of Prem. The marginal characteristic of Sneha is that one is never satiated, despite repeatedly looking at the object of one's affection. Vijay. Are there any superior and inferior divisions within Sneha? Goswami. Yes, there are also three divisions in accordance with the gradations of the development of Sneha. These are Uttam, Madhya and Kanishta. In Kanishta Sneha, the heart melts on touching the limbs of one's beloved. In Madhya Sneha, the heart melts simply upon seeing one's beloved. And in Uttam Sneha, the heart melts merely by hearing anything in connection with one's dearest beloved. Vijay. How many types of Sneha are there? Goswami. The natural characteristic of Sneha is that it can manifest in two ways, Grita Sneha and Madhu Sneha. Vijay. What is Grita Sneha? Goswami. Grita Sneha is deep with a great deal of respectful affection. Grita, ghee, is not independently sweet like honey. It is only delicious when it is mixed with sugar and other ingredients. Similarly, Grita Sneha is not independently sweet like Madhu Sneha, and it only becomes highly palatable when mixed with other barbs such as Garva, pride, or Asurya, jealousy. Grita Sneha is cool in its natural state, so it becomes thick with mutual honor and deep respect. In other words, Grita Sneha solidifies in contact with the mutual respect, Adara, of the Nayak and Naika, just as ghee naturally solidifies in contact with a cool substance. This Sneha is called Grita Sneha because it has the characteristic of ghee. Vijay. You have mentioned Adara, honor. What is its nature? Goswami. Adara is born from Gaurava, awe and veneration. So Adara and Gaurava are mutually interdependent. This honor, Adara, becomes clearly manifest in Sneha, although it is present in Rati. Vijay. What is Gaurava? Goswami. Gaurava is the conception, he is my Guru Jana, respectable superior. And the Bhav that is aroused by this conception is called Sambram. Adara and Gaurava are mutually interdependent. Maintaining a respectful attitude is a sign that Gaurava, awe and veneration, is naturally present. Vijay. What is the nature of Madhu Sneha? Goswami. Madhu Sneha is the affection that is imbued with excessive possessiveness, Madhyatva, which makes the lover think, He is mine. This affection manifests its own sweetness without depending on any other baths. It is independently full of sweetness, and a variety of rasas are combined within it. It also creates heat because of its natural tendency towards mad passion. It has been called Madhu Sneha because it has these characteristics of honey. Vijay. What is possessiveness? Madhyatva. Goswami. Two conceptions are active in Rati. One type of Rati is imbued with the idea, I am his, and the other type of Rati is imbued with the conviction he is mine. The predominant mood of Grita Sneha is I am his, whereas the predominant mood in Madhu Sneha is he is mine. Grita Sneha is Chandravali's characteristic mood, while Madhu Sneha is Srimati Radhika's. Both these bhavs are Madhyatva. When Vijay, 
heard about these two types of barve, his hair began to stand on end. Choked with emotion, he offered his Dandavat Pranam to Sri Guru Goswami and said, Today I have become fortunate, and my human birth has become successful. After drinking the nectar of your instructions, my thirst to hear is still not satiated. Now please be causelessly merciful to me by explaining about Man. Goswami Man is Sneha that has attained the pinnacle of his excellence and has externally assumed a guileful or crooked mood to cause the Nayak and Nayika to realize a new sweetness. Vijay How many types of Man are there? Goswami there are two types of man, Uddata and Lalita. Vijay. What is Uddata man? Goswami. There are also two types of Odata man. One type takes on a submissive mood, Dakshinyabhav, externally, and a contrary mood, Vamyabhav, internally. The other is expressed through extremely cryptic behavior. It hides the barbs of the mind and is characterized by profound gravity, laced with a slight scent of Bhamya. Udataman occurs only in Grita Sneha. Vijay. What is Lalitaman? I cannot say why, but for some reason I have more interest in it. Goswami. When Madhu Sneha becomes turbulent due to its tendency to boil over, covering unrestrained an extremely sweet crookedness and humor. It is called Lalita Man. There are also two types of Lalita Man, namely Kotilya Lalit Man and Narm Lalit Man. When the heart independently assumes a crooked nature, it is called Kotilya Lalit Man, and Man that is infused with humor is called Narma Lalit Man. Both types of Lalit Man arise from Madhu Sneha. Vijay. What is Pranaya? Goswami. When Man is imbued with Vishramba, so that one considers oneself non different from one's beloved, it is called Pranaya. Vijay. What is the meaning of Vishramba in this context? Goswami. Vishramba is intimate confidence and it is the intrinsic nature of pranaya. Vishramba is not the instrumental cause, naimitika karan, of pranaya. Rather, it is the ingredient cause, upadan karana. There are two kinds of vishramba, maitra and sakya. Vijay, what is maitra vishramba? Goswami, maitra vishramba is the implicit trust that is imbued with courtesy and humility. Vijay. What is Sakya Vishramba? Goswami. Implicit trust is called Sakya Vishramba when it is free from all types of fear and is imbued with the full confidence that one's beloved is controlled by one's love. Vijay. Please clearly explain the interrelationship between Pranaya, Sneha, and man. Goswami, in some circumstances, pranaya arises from sneha and then develops the characteristic behavior of man. In other cases, man arises from sneha and then becomes pranaya. Therefore, man and pranaya are interchangeably related as cause and effect. That is why Vishramba has been described separately. The appearance of Maitra and Sakya is caused by the differences between Uddata and Lalita. Moreover, there is also the further consideration of Sumaitra and Susakya in Pranaya. That is, the prefix Su indicates special or good. Vijay. Now, please describe the symptoms of Rag. Goswami. Pranaya is called rag in its highest condition, when even extreme distress seems like happiness. Vijay. 
How many types of rag are there? Goswami. There are two types of rag, Nilima rag and Raktima rag. Vijay. How many types of Nilima rag are there? Goswami. There are also two types of Nilima rag, namely Nili and Shyam rag. Vijay. What is Nili rag? Goswami. Nili rag is rag that has no possibility of becoming weakened, and when it is visible externally, it conceals the other barbs with which it is combined. This rag can be seen in Chandravali and Krishna. Vijay. What is Shyam rag? Goswami. Shyam rag is the rag that is displayed through timidity, osadaseka, and so on. It is manifest somewhat more than Nili Rag and is attained after a long time. Vijay. How many types of Raktima Rag are there? Goswami. There are two types, Kusumba Rag and Manjishita Sambhav Rag. Vijay. What is Kusumba Rag? Goswami. Kusumba Rag is the Rag that is infused at once within the heart and that manifests its own beauty according to necessity, although it illuminates the splendor of other rags at the same time. Kusumba rag is stable in the heart that has a special capacity to contain it, although it sometimes diminishes when it is mixed with manjistha in Krishna's beloveds. Vijay, what is manjistha rag? Goswami, Manjista rag is the rag that is self-manifest, that is, it is not dependent on others. It is never destroyed, it is always steadfast, and it is never dulled, unlike Kusamba. Such rag is found in Srimati Radha and Krishna. The conclusion is that the bhavs that I have already described, such as Grita Sneha, Udatta, Maitra, Sumaitra, and Nilima, are found in Chandravali and the Mahishis such as Rukmini. All of the progressively superior Bhavs such as Madhusneha, Lalita, Sakya, Susakya and Raktima are found fully in Sri Radhika. They are sometimes manifested in Satyabhama and under special circumstances in Lakshman as well. When I discussed Alamban Vaibhav earlier, I analyzed the divisions such as Svapaksh, between the various devis of Gokul which arise from those different types of Bhav. Scholarly personalities take support of transcendental intelligence, the power of Pragyan, to comprehend the various separate divisions that can occur by the mutual combination of the 41 other Mukya Bhavs mentioned in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. I am not giving a separate explanation here. Vijay. Which bhavs do you mean when you use the term other bhavs, bhavantara? Goswami. This means the stai madhurya bhav, 33 vyabhachari bhavs and 7 gona bhavs, beginning with hasya. The term other bhavs, bhavantara, refers to this total of 41 bhavs taken together. Vijay, I have understood the subject of rag. Now please explain anurag. Goswami, anurag is eternally newer and newer and causes one's beloved to be always experienced as new at every moment. Vijay, does this anurag manifest any other fascinating features? Goswami, Anurag is manifest in forms such as sentiment in which the lovers feel that each has subjugated the other by their love, by prem vaichitya, and by the desire to take birth among lifeless objects. Anurag also causes the spurti of Krishna to appear at the time of separation. Vijay, I can easily understand the sense of mutual subjugation and the desire to take birth as an inert object such as a tree. But please mercifully instruct me about Prem Vaichitya. Goswami, 
Prem Vaichitya is included in Vipralamba. I will tell you about this later. Vijay. That's fine. Then kindly tell me about Mahabhav. Goswami. My dear child, my acquaintance with Brajaras is utterly insignificant. Where am I, and where is the description of the supremely elevated Mahabhav? Nevertheless, I am speaking on the strength of the merciful shiksha I have received from Sri Rupa Goswami and Pandit Goswami. You should realize that by their mercy alone I can say something in accordance with Sri Rupa Goswami's specifications. When Anurag, in the form of Yavad Ashrai Vritti, attains the condition of Swadhyam Veda Dash and becomes manifest, Prakashita, it is called Bhav or Mahabhav. Vijay, Prabhu, I am thoroughly worthless and destitute. I am inquiring foolishly. Please be compassionate and explain the symptoms of Mahabhav in simple language that is suitable for my understanding. Goswami Sri Radhika Ji is the Ashraya of Anurag and Krishna is the Vishaya of Anurag. Sri Nandanandan, in his Sringara form, is the ultimate limit of Vishaya Tattva, and Sri Radhaji is the ultimate limit of Ashraya Tattva. This means that Sri Krishna alone is the supermost Vishaya of Anurag, and Sri Radhaji is its supermost Ashraya. Their Anurag is the Staibhav. When that Anurag reaches its ultimate limit, it is called Yavad Ashraya Vritti. In that condition, it attains the Svayamved Dash, the condition that is only completely realized by that special beloved. At that time, Anurag is illuminated by the Bhavs such as Sudipta. Vijay. A whole Mahabhav. What is the meaning of Mahabhav? Today I have understood something. Mahabhav is the ultimate limit of all Bhavs. I have become intensely eager to hear an example of this Mahabhav. Please be merciful and describe something to satisfy my ears. Goswami, this shloka is an example of Mahabhav. Radeya bhavataschā citta jatanu svedye vilapya kramad yunjan adri nikunja kunjara pate nirduta beda brahmam Chitraya Swayam Anvaranjayad Iha Brahmanda Hamyodare Buyu Birnavaraga Hingula Barai Shringara Kuru Kriti Ujvala Nilamani Staibhav Prakarna 1.55 Translation Sri Radha Krishna continuously enjoy their loving play in the Nikunjas. Vrinda Devi having realized the excellence of their anurag, says to Krishna, O king of mad elephants, who sports in the groves of Govardhan Hill, there is an accomplished artist of the name Sringararas, and upon the fire generated from the heat of your two baths, he has slowly melted your shellac-like hearts and made them one. Then mixing that with profuse quantities of the kunkum of your ever-fresh rag, he is painting an astonishing picture upon the inner walls of the grand temple of the universe. Radeya bhavatas chachita jatuni svede vilapya kramad yunjan adri nikunja kunjara pate nirduta beda brahmam chitraya svayam anvaranjayad Iha Brahmanda Ham Yodare Buyo Navaraga Hingula Bare Shringara Karu Kriti Translation Here Nirduta Bed Brahman means Radha and Krishna have become free from their duality and become one, thus culminating in the stage of Swayam Veda Dash. The grand temple of the universe should be understood to refer to Yavad Ashraya Vritti, and the term he is painting indicates the condition 
of Prakashita. Vijay, where is this Mahabhav to be found? Goswami, Mahabhav is extremely rare. Even in the Mahishis headed by Rukmini, it is only experienced by the Braja Devis headed by Sri Radha. Vijay, what is the purport of this? Goswami, Swakya Bhav is present wherever the Nayika is bound to the Nayik by the regulations of marriage. In Swakya Bhav, Rati is Samanjasaha, so it is not competent to attain the most elevated conditions such as Mahabhav. Swakya Bhav is also present in some gopis in Braj, but Parakya Bhav is predominant. In Braj, Rati is Samarta, so it develops fully and reaches up to the condition of Mahabhav. Vijay, how many types of Mahabhav are there? Goswami, Mahabhav, which is the embodiment of the highest nectar, attracts the hearts and causes it to attain its own intrinsic nature. There are two types of Mahabhav, Rudha and Adhirudha. Vijay, what is Rudha Mahabhav? Goswami, Rudha Mahabhav is the stage in which all the sattvika bhavs are manifest in the Udipta condition. Vijay, be merciful and explain the Anubhavs of Rudha Mahabhav. Goswami, in the Rudha Mahabhav, even the passing of a moment is unbearable. This Rudha Mahabhav churns the hearts of those present. A kalpa seems to pass like a moment. Kalpa Shantava. One feels dejected because of the apprehension that Sri Krishna is undergoing some inconvenience, although he is actually happy. One becomes forgetful of everything, even oneself, although one is not bewildered. And one moment seems to pass like a kalpa, shana kalpata. Some of these anubhavs are experienced during meeting, and some during separation. Vijay, even the passing of a moment is unbearable. Please give an example of this to help me understand. Goswami, this bhav is Vaichitya Vipralamba, a particular manifestation of separation. Even in meeting, there is the feeling of being separated, and even a moment's separation is intolerable. That is why, when the gopis looked upon Sri Krishna, for the first time after so long at Kurukshetra, they cursed Brahmaji, the creator of their eyelids, because the blinking of their eyelids was obstructing their vision of Krishna. Even the time that elapsed during the blinking of their eyes became unbearable. Vijay This Rudhabhav churns the hearts of those who are present. What does that mean? Goswami For example, at Kurukshetra, when the Mahishis, such as Rukmini, and the kings, such as Yudhisthira, saw the uncommon Anurag of the gopis who had come to see Krishna, their hearts were churned. That is what this statement refers to. Vijay, what is Kalpa Shantava? Goswami, although the night of the Rasalila was as long as a night of Brahma, it still seemed to be less than a second to the gopis. Such a mood is called Kalpa Shantava. Vijay, please help me to understand the bhav of feeling dejected for fear that Krishna may undergo some inconvenience, although actually he is happy. Goswami, an example is found in this sloka. Yate sujata charanam buruham staneshu Bita shanai priyata di mahi kar kesheshu te nata vimatasita vyata te nakim swit kurpa di bi brahmati dir bavada yusam na. Shimad Bhagavatam 10.31.19 Even when the gopis hold the lotus feet of Sri Krishna upon their breasts, they think, It is lamentable that our breasts are so hard. Krishna's so soft lotus feet must be feeling pain when we keep them on our breasts. Such regret is called dejection, due to the fear of difficulty for Krishna at the time of his happiness. 
Vijay, what is the phenomenon of forgetting everything, even in the absence of bewilderment? Goswami, all types of bewilderment, moha, are vanquished by the spurti of Krishna within the heart. That is, there is the complete absence of moha. But when the spurti of Krishna occurs, one loses awareness of everything else in the entire world, including one's own body. Vijay. What is Shana Kalpata? Goswami. Krishna describes the state of the gopi's separation to Uddhava. Uddhava, when I was with the Brajabhasis in Vrindavan, their nights with me seemed to pass like a moment. But in separation from me, those same nights appeared to never end, and they felt those nights to be longer than a kalpa. In this way, they would experience the passing of one moment to be like being lost in a vast ocean of time. Vijay, I have understood Rudha Mahabhav. Now please explain Adiruddha Mahabhav. Goswami, Adiruddha Mahabhav is the mood in which all the Anubhavs that are manifested in resolute Mahabhav attain special characteristics that are even more astonishing than those Anubhavs in their normal forms. Vijay, how many types of Adiruddha are there? Goswami, there are two types, modern and modern. Vijay, what is modern? Goswami, the Adiruddha Mahabhav in which all the sattvic abhavs of the Nayak and Nayika are aroused to a much greater extent than in the Udipta condition is called Modan. In this Modan bhav, Krishna and Radha feel some anguish and fear. Vijay, please describe the position of Modan. Goswami, Modan does not occur anywhere other than in the Ute of Sri Radhika. Modan is the dearest and most delightful pleasure sport of the Hladini Shakti. In some special conditions of separation, Modan becomes Mohan, and as an effect of this helpless condition of separation, all the sattvic abhavs manifest in the Sudipta condition. Vijay, please describe the Anubhavs in the stage of Mohan. Goswami, Krishna faints while being embraced by another lover. While Rukmini is embracing Krishna in Dwarka, he sometimes falls unconscious, remembering his playful pastimes with Radha in the Kunjas of Vrindavan near the banks of the Jamuna. One desires Krishna's happiness while personally accepting unbearable distress. The Bhav called Brahmand Shobha Karita causes the whole universe to feel anguish, and even birds and beasts begin to cry. The powerful longing that in the event of death the five elements of the body may associate with Sri Krishna, Divya Unmad, Divine Madness, and other Anubhavs also occur in the stage of Mohan. The miraculous characteristics of Mahabhav are manifest to the fullest extent in Sri Radhika's Mohan Bhav, even more than in Moha, which is included among the Sanchari Bhavs. Vijay, Prabhu, if you consider it appropriate, kindly describe two symptoms of Divya Unmad. Goswami, when Mohan Bhav attains a unique, indescribable mode of behavior, developing into a wondrous condition, that resembles a state of utter confusion, then it is Divya Unmad. It has many different features, such as Udgurna and Chitra Jalpa. Vijay, what is Udgurna? Goswami, the state of Divya Unmad in which many varieties of astounding and uncontrollable endeavors are manifest is called Udgurna. Radhika experienced Udgurna when Krishna departed for Mathura. At that time, as if in complete forgetfulness due to feelings of separation from Krishna, Radhika thought, Krishna is coming, he will be here in just a minute. Thinking in that way, she made the bed in her kunj. 
Sometimes she rebuked the dark clouds, like a naik who expresses anger towards her unfaithful lover, Kandita, and sometimes she wandered around hurriedly in the dense darkness of the night, like a naika who makes a secret journey to meet her lover, Abhisarini. Vijay, what is Chitrajalpa? Goswami, Chitrajalpa consists of the discourses that occur when one meets a friend of one's beloved. They are full of intense longing, and they arise from baths such as jealousy, envy, restlessness, pride and eagerness. Vijay, how many angas of Chitrajalpa are there? Goswami, there are ten limbs of Chitrajalpa, namely Prajalpa, Parijalpa, Vijalpa, Ujalpa, Sanjalpa, Avajalpa, Abhijalpa, Ajalpa, Pratijalpa and Sujalpa. You can find a description of them in Brahmara Git in the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Vijay. What is Prajalpa? Goswami. Prajalpa means to reveal the tactlessness of one's lover using various neglectful mannerisms that are imbued with malice, jealousy and pride. Vijay. What is Parijalpa? Goswami. Parijalpa is showing one's own expertise through expressions that establish faults in one's prandan, such as his cruelty, treachery, and fickleness. Vijay. What is Vijalpa? Goswami. Vijalpa refers to speech in which one outwardly makes malicious allegations against Krishna, while the aspect of man is hidden in the heart. Vijay. What is Ujjalpa? Goswami. Ujjalpa means speaking of Krishna's treachery, hypocrisy and so on, out of jealousy arising from one's pride, and always making hostile allegations against him. Vijay. What is Sangjalpa? Goswami. Sangjalpa is establishing Krishna's ungratefulness, harshness, deceitfulness and so on, through cryptic joking accusations and mannerisms. Vijay. What is Avajalpa? Goswami. Avajalpa is expressing one's involuntary or helpless attachment to Krishna with fear imbued with jealousy, while finding in him faults such as hard-heartedness, lustiness and villainy. Vijay. What is Abhijalpa? Goswami. Abhijalpa means to lament with indirect expressions, such as Krishna even gives the distress of separation to his birds, such as his parrot and the peacocks, so attachment to him is useless. Vijay. What is Ajalpa? Goswami. Ajalpa means to expose Krishna's duplicity and persecution due to self-disparagement, and to say that only subjects other than Krishna's Leelakata gives happiness. Vijay. What is Pratijalpa? Goswami. Pratijalpa means showing respect towards a messenger sent by Krishna and saying, Krishna is a knave and a dacoit when he is seeking amorous love, so it is inappropriate to meet with him because he is with other charming ladies at the moment. Vijay. What is Sujalpa? Goswami. Sujalpa is inquiring about Krishna out of simplicity, with a mood of gravity, humility, restlessness and eagerness. Vijay. Prabhu, am I qualified to know about the symptoms of Madan? Goswami. When Prem, which is the embodiment of the essence of Hladini, increases even further than the Mahabhav that I have described so far, it attains an extremely advanced condition. The paramount emotion in which it becomes jubilant, ulas, due to the simultaneous manifestation of all types of bhavs, is called madan. This madan is eternally and splendidly manifest only in Sri Radha. It does not arise in other gopis, even in those such as Lalita. Vijay. Is there jealousy in modern bhav? 
Goswami, jealousy is very prominent in modern Bhav. It is even seen to be directed towards unworthy and inanimate objects. Modern is also famous for causing Sri Radha to praise anything that has even the faintest scent of a relationship with Krishna, although she is constantly in intimate union with him. For example, Sri Radha becomes envious of Krishna's Vana Mali, garland of forest flowers, and Krishna's sweethearts from the mountain regions, the girls of the Pulinda tribe. Vijay, when does modern arise? Goswami, this fascinating modern bhav only occurs at the time of meeting. The eternal sporting pastimes of modern reign splendidly in innumerable forms. Vijay, Prabhu, can we find a description of this type of modern in the statements of any sages? Goswami, modern ras is unlimited, so it is difficult for even the transcendental Cupid, Sri Krishna, to understand the full extent of its activities. That is why even Sri Shukamuni was not able to describe it fully, and what to speak of the philosophers of Rasa, such as Bharat Muni. Vijay, your statements are astounding. How is it possible that even Krishna himself, who is the embodiment of Rasa and the constitutional enjoyer of Rasa, does not fully understand the behavior of Madan? Goswami, Krishna is Rasa himself, and he is unlimited, omniscient and omnipotent. Nothing is hidden from him, and nothing is inaccessible or impossible for him. He is eternally Ekaras, and at the same time he is also Anekaras, due to his Achintya Beda Abeda Dharma. As Ekaras, encompassing everything within himself, he is Atmarama, and in this condition no rasa exists separately from him. However, he is simultaneously Aneka Ras. Thus, besides Atmagata Ras, which is rasa experienced by oneself, there is also Paragata Ras, that rasa experienced by others, and the varieties of mixed Atma Para Vichitra Ras. The happiness of his leelas lies in the latter two types of Ras. When Paragata expands to the ultimate degree, it is called Parakya Ras, and this highest development manifests abundantly in Vrindavan. Thus, for the Atmagata Ras, the unknown, exalted and unique happiness of Parakya Ras is the last limit of Madan. This is present during the purely unmanifest Leela in Golok, and also to a slight extent in Braj. Vijay Prabhu, you have shown unlimited mercy to me. Now please explain the essence of all types of Madhurya Ras in brief, so that I may easily understand. Goswami All the Bhavs that arise in the Braja Devis are divine in all respects, and beyond the jurisdiction of logic. Therefore, it is not only difficult, but impossible to describe those Bhavs thoroughly. It has been stated in Shastra that Sri Radhika's rag manifested from Purvarag. Under special conditions, that very rag becomes Anurag, and from Anurag becomes Sneha. Then it is further manifest in the form of Maan and Pranaya. All these points are not fixed, but the condition of the Dumayita is certainly the last limit of Sadarani Rati. Samanjasarati develops as far as Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag and Anurag, in which Diptarati is manifest in the Jvalta form. In the Rudha Mahabhav there is Udipta, and from Modan onwards there is Sudiptarati. You should understand that Madhurya Ras is sometimes like this, because the order of the stages may also be rearranged according to the differences in time, place and circumstance. Sadarani Rati develops as far as Prem. 
Samandasarati as far as Anurag, and Samartarati as far as Mahabhav. Vijay. How far does Rati develop in Sakyaras? Goswami. The Rati of the Narma Vyasa associates reaches up to Anurag, but the Rati of Subal and others reaches up to Mahabhav. Vijay. I see that the characteristics of Staibhav that you have described earlier reach up to the limit of Mahabhav. If Staibhav is only one tattva from top to bottom, why do we see a difference between the rasas? Goswami. This difference between the rasas arises from the different kinds of Staibhav. The mysterious activities of Staibhav are not evident. The different categories only become visible when the ingredients are combined with the Staibhav. The Staibhav attains the state of rasa by a combination of the appropriate components of rasa, according to its particular hidden identity. Vijay. Is the distinction between Swakya and Parakya eternal in Madhurya Rati? Goswami. Yes, the distinction between Swakya and Parakya is eternal. It is not an arbitrary designation. If this difference were to be considered an arbitrary designation, then all the rasas headed by Madhurya Ras would also have to be considered arbitrary designations. One's eternal and natural rasa is indeed his own distinctive category of eternal ras. He has a corresponding ruchi and performs bhajan accordingly, and this leads to a corresponding type of attainment. There is also Swakya Ras in Braj. Those who maintain the mood, Krishna is my husband, have a corresponding type of Ruchi, Sadhan Bhajan, and ultimate attainment. The quality of Swakya in Dwarka is in Vaikuntha Tattva, whereas the quality of Swakya in Braj is in Goloka Tattva. There is a difference between them. Vasudev Krishna, the son of Vasudev, is situated within Brajanath Krishna, and one should understand that the highest condition of this Swakya Tattva in relation to Vasudev Krishna extends only as far as Vaikuntha. After hearing this, Vijay offered pranam to Sri Gurudev and returned to his residence, absorbed in great love. Thus ends the 36th chapter of Jaiva Dharma entitled Madhurya Ras, Stai Bhav and Stages of Rati.